Hello and welcome to NDTV Profit. You're watching IPO Adda and my guest today is from Ola Electric Mobility. Uh, the company is coming out with an IPO which opens on August 2nd and closes on 6th of August. Price between 72 to 76 rupees per share uh, is an IPO of over 6,145 crores with a fresh issue component of 5,500 crores. And joining me is Bhavish Agarwal who is the chairman and managing director of the company and Harish Avichandani who is the CFO of the company. Bhavish, uh, let me start with you. 72 to 76 uh, surprised many on the street. How did you convince your investors to, you know, agree to a discount <laughs> to the December level? Yeah. Sajid, firstly, thank you so much for interviewing us. We are very excited to be on your show at this time in our journey. Uh, see, we are building Ola Electric uh, focused on uh, the future of electrification of automotive. And this journey is just beginning. We are at the start of this journey. This company is a young company just a four or five year old company. And in these short three, four years, we've actually grown to, as you see in our books last year, 5,300 crore uh, revenue, 90% growth over FI23. So growth is strong, uh, company is young, and we wanted to bring this company to market early so that, because it's an Indian manufacturing, Indian future EV story. We want to have the partnership support and involvement of the Indian investors, the retail investors, the uh, you know, institutional investors. And we also wanted to price it aggressively and attractively and leave enough money on the table so that investors make money and, and are really uh, with us for the long term of this journey. You know, uh, when you initially came out with the DRHP and everyone was very apprehensive about the valuation because we were talking about uh, six, uh, seven billion dollars valuation which was coming in at that point in time. But uh, and at a, at a dis uh, valuation of four billion dollars, it seems fairly priced and compared to many of your competitors like a Bajaj or an Aisha Motor. Um, in that sense, uh, do you hmm. see electric uh, vehicles demand, uh, you know, also uh, there would be enough demand for uh, pure play EV makers as well? See, EV is the future, Sajit. Uh, I think that globally this uh, debate has been settled that, after, you know, it's a once in a century technology shift in automotive. A century ago, we moved from a steam engine powered by coal to an internal combustion engine powered by gasoline. And now uh, we are moving towards electric uh, vehicles powered by electricity and lithium cells. And it's a very uh, secular shift. Uh, the only question is how long will it take and who will be the leaders? And uh, as you can see, India's EV journey pretty much began three years ago when we launched our uh, first electric vehicle. And in just three short years, we have uh, grown in the scooter space. Uh, you know, our numbers are public, etc. So I won't repeat that. But uh, the, we've just crashed the surface in terms of India's electrification potential and, and journey. So going from scooters, we are soon to be launching bikes. We have uh, showcased our bikes last year. And this year, 15th August, uh, annual uh, launch day of ours, we will be showcasing and even launching uh, and some exciting uh, announcements on our bike front. And, uh, and then there's a long journey ahead. In addition to products, we're also building the core ecosystem and the core foundational technologies of, uh, of EVs. And just like the engine is the heart in the ICE era, the cell is the heart in the EV era. And we've built, uh, we, you know, four years ago, we started investing in our own cell technologies and cell manufacturing. And uh, early next year, we'll start actually uh, producing from our Giga factory, which is complete and trial production is uh, happening. Uh, our own cell will come into our products early next year. And we actually have also been given the largest allocation from the government in the lithium cell PLI, about 20 gigawatt hour. So all of this comes together to create a, a very strong, exciting EV ecosystem uh, journey that Ola Electric is on. Harish, uh, gross uh, margins of 12.6% for FI24, uh, that's a good jump uh, from 2.3 that you had in last financial, FI23 uh, financial year. Um, my sense, my uh, you know, my under, uh, want to understand how this gross margin picture will move forward, uh, and, and where is the you know efficiency going to come in to help you push this margin further so that you become a bit positive. Yeah, so Sajid, we have continued our journey to improve our gross margin significantly year on year, and that is reflecting in our numbers from FY23 to FY24. Now, you see, gross margin is the outcome of multiple factors which go into building or arriving at the gross margin. Uh, we continue to invest in technology that continues to help us in improving our cost structures, improving the process of manufacturing. So that acts as a significant contributor to our gross margin improvement roadmap. Uh, 
though you have seen the fame subsidy actually drop from the government, but the production link incentives of the government have kicked in. We are the only uh, two-wheeler company where two of our flagship products are certified for PLI. So they flow into our, that impact of which flows into our gross margin. So gross margin roadmap is very clear. We'll continue to improve our cost, uh, cost uh, structures that will you know, get efficiencies on our bomb costs, et cetera. So you'll continue to see the gross margin improvements in this journey. Give me a sense of that because Bhavish spoke about the fact that you already started uh, you know, testing your cell factory, Giga Factory. Uh, and when you start using that product early next year, uh, that synergies are going to kick in further. So what kind of synergies would be there with respect to cost? Because one third of your vehicle cost is sell. And how much of benefit that comes in and how much you can push uh, on the pricing front so that uh, you know, uh, the convergence of ICE and EV comes, uh, comes to play? See, I mean, I would refrain from giving any numbers, so future-looking numbers currently. But the way you think about is that, A, we are a vertically integrated, uh, integrated company. We do a host of things in-house, and cell is a critical and core to our technology. We have invested into it, uh, and as part of that integration, our cell will start going into our vehicles uh, from next year onwards. So that will have a significant improvement on our gross margin profile. So cell is core to our in vertical integration, and that will drive the margin profile. While pricing is a different strategy, tactical pricing, maybe Bhavish can talk about it, but our focus on uh, and a roadmap on gross margin improvement is relentless. Bhavish, tactical pricing, he's, uh, you will talk about it. Uh, give me a sense, because revenue per unit uh, has fallen from FI 23 to <laughs> FI 24. Uh, and I assume that you know is the synergies uh, and uh, you know uh, li you know scale of uh, operations uh, partly go to do with it. But as uh, we move forward, it has to uh, you know converge with the ice pricing so that you know uh, there is a uh, cannibalization of that technology that comes into play. So how do you play that uh, game? See, uh, as we have broadened our product portfolio from a premium product, we began our journey from the premium product, S1 Pro and S1 Air. And uh, with the S1X also launching, which is a mass market product priced almost exactly at the ICE price point, uh, the overall average selling price as a portfolio obviously will move down, uh, and that's what you're referring to. But uh, our revenue has grown significantly. Revenue has grown 90% FI24 over FI23. That shows the volume growth as well as uh, uh, number of units, et cetera, and the pricing per unit both combined. Now, looking ahead, our Q1 numbers of this year, at, at least volume numbers are all public because they are every month updated in the government portal. And you can see that, that our volumes are continuing to grow and the product mix is also evolving. We are focused on bringing EVs to the mass market. So that's why the S1 X portfolio is, uh, has seen a very strong uh, uptake from the market in the last couple of months that it's been in the market. And we do uh, expect uh, our uh, mass market products to really penetrate deeper into the country, into even smaller towns and villages. And as this goes along, uh, tactically here and there, we will give discounts, seasonal discounts, some uh, regional discounts, etc. But broadly, the strategic themes on, uh, on uh, uh, technology investments, manufacturing vertical integration, as well as uh, the volume-linked uh, uh, benefit, margin benefit that we get because our cost structure largely stays the same. All of those help us uh, achieve uh, a path to profitability. Uh, do you, are you seeing cannibalization of the ICE market uh, as we speak because you have uh, offering in that segment now? Uh, and is that uh, going to be aggressively pushed forward? Absolutely, Sajid. You see, uh, uh, three years ago, the EV penetration in two-wheelers was pretty much zero. And now in the scooter segment of two-wheelers, EV penetration is upwards of 15% already, and in just three short years. In fact, I would say two and a half years. So, uh, so there's very significant uh, growth in EV penetration in scooters. Motorbikes will uh, happen as we bring out motorbikes over the course of the next few months, and you'll see you know, EV penetration in that category also uh, rise. So eventually, like I said, our belief is uh, automotive will move to EV over time as uh, every uh, segment gets electrified. You know. Um 
as you launch the uh, motorbikes, there would be a big uh, nervousness with some of the uh, players because you're going to hit them where it uh, hurts the most. Uh, so uh, my point is that uh, are you going to put the pricing also in that uh, frame so that uh, you know there also you see the adoption rate much higher because EV motorbikes as a class is going to be the first time mm. it's going to happen. The ICE players have now move towards a hybrid model, but you are directly going to your pure play EV bike. Uh, how do you see adoption and you know uh, uh, and push for this kind of segment? See the beauty about EVs, uh, Sajit, is as we build products and as we build our vertically integrated manufacturing and technology platforms. Different products, uh, be it scooter, motorbike, etc., all can be built on the same technology platform. And hence, our cost structure actually carries forward and uh, improves with any other category of product we build because the cell is the same, the electronics are the same, the motor is the same, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the, we get a lot of economies of scale uh, if we add other uh, categories also. This is where EVs are slightly better and different than ICE, where each product is probably a different platform. Whereas for us, we have engineered our products as a single uh, common platform and everything is derived of the same components. So in terms of our cost structure, the same cost structure carries forward uh, largely. And pricing, though, when we announce, then you will see. I can't say anything today. Harish, uh, you know, one of the key factors that, uh, you know, most of the analysts would be seeking from you is the path to cash flow prof uh, profitability. Uh, uh, and do you see that happening very soon? Uh, uh, or it, it, it will be in a phased manner that you do it because you still have at least two, three years of capex requirement to full, fully build out the cell gigafactory and then, uh, you know, move into the, that. So should the street, uh, street be looking at uh, two to three years before that happens? So if you look at our you know, business profile, that A, we are, you know, as we explained, the, amount of the operating leverage kicks in, we are expanding our scale, etc. So the path to profitability is very clear. I would you know, not put a time frame to it. That will be like forward looking. But the path to profitability is very clear from our perspective. Uh, if you look at from a cash flow perspective, our core business is obviously has a different cash flow profile. But where are we investing in the future? We're investing for growth. We're investing for expansion in the future. It's also been discussed in our book. We are uh, raising capital for our sell in the IPO. We are investing into R&D, et cetera. So all these you know, kind of factor in in terms of the way the cash flows get generated in the future. And uh, in manufacturing, I think as Babish also mentioned, we, as we scale up, uh, the path to profitability is extremely, extremely you know, uh, faster. So our scale is important for us. So in cash flow profitability is, is absolutely there on the anvil. It's not something which is there. The analysts look at it from a different perspective, from a CAPEX perspective. But our CAPEX also is largely well-funded in a larger roadmap both for the auto side and on the sell side. Uh, Bhavish, do you think the CapEx has peaked out for you in that sense? Uh, because, uh, you know, over the last few years, you have been investing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, cash into CapEx and technology and R&D. Uh, do you think that the peak is over now? It's a tapering which is going to happen over the next two, uh, two, two to three years? Uh, I think, like Harish said, I'll add to that. Uh, there are two elements of our capex largely. There's the two-wheeler manufacturing stuff and there's the uh, cell gigafactory. Now, the two-wheeler manufacturing, we've already created reasonable scale and uh, we have a lot of the infrastructure already ready for a much higher volume production. And as market uh, grows, we will keep adding more and more machinery into the infrastructure. So that might involve some capex, but a lot of the capex has also already been done. On the cell side, we will actually continue to invest into capex. We are just uh, doing the phase one right now. And over the next few years, we will get to the 20 gigawatt hour uh, uh, PLI allocation, volume allocation that we have. We will invest that kind of capex to get there over over time in a in a calibrated way. So we do have different parts of our business at different stages of uh, investment. Harish, the 5,500 crores that you're raising in primary issue, which comprises of capex uh, repayment of some loans and investment into R&D. Uh, will that be enough, uh, as Bhavesh is saying, that as he scales up to 20 gigawatt hour, <coughs> or you will need to come back to the market and raise f fresh funds? I'll answer that, Harish. Yeah. So, uh, no, so on this one, uh, see, the capex required for 20 gigawatt hour uh, is not part of the use of proceeds right now. 
but uh, that money also uh, will be not necessarily only from the markets. There could be different other instruments, including internal accruals that go into uh, financing the future capex beyond what is in the current uh, use of proceeds in the book. But I think uh, the main point is that uh, uh, the business will, uh, as we are scaling up volumes, we are getting towards uh, profitability. There is a uh, inflection point there somewhere, which I can't comment. That will be future forward looking. But uh, we also continue to invest into the vertically integrated manufacturing uh, uh, thesis of ours and strategy, as well as doing all the core technology elements to continue to improve uh, performance of the product, as well as uh, margin uh, expansion for us. Uh, Bhavish, you mentioned briefly about the first three months of sales, and it was coming around 1.1 uh, lakh units in the first uh, quarter of this financial year. Uh, what we are looking at is around four, four and a half or five lakh coming for the full year. Uh, is that the f uh, good uh, amount, of, uh, good number to work with uh, for the street? And uh, will uh, Mobix uh, or motorcycles be, be also part uh, uh, post uh, August? So I think I wouldn't again be able to comment on uh, forward-looking numbers, but uh, you do see, looking backwards, if you see there's a certain month-on-month uh, -month growth trend which reflects the penetration growth in the industry and our market share growth on top of that. So both these uh, themes will, I presume, uh, be relevant for the year ahead. Again, I can't uh, comment on, uh, on the future numbers. But uh, uh, like I said, uh, the scooter portfolio is where it is. Now, adding to this, soon enough, we'll have the motorbike portfolio. And motorbike market is almost 2x of the scooter market in India. Um, you know, you price your IPO attractively for the retail to uh, come in uh, and the mutual funds to come in because they are the ones who are now deciding on pricing as well okay. because of the kind of liquidity pool they are sitting on. But uh, if I were to ask you, uh, give me two or three milestones that uh, you know one as an investor should be looking at. What are what are what are those milestones? I think, uh, uh, Sajid, like uh, we've discussed, uh, there will be uh, uh, you know in the next year our motorbikes will be coming out, our cell will be entering production, our financials will continue to evolve as we scale the business. Uh, so these are the key milestones in the near future. Uh, and we actually, like I said, we have priced it aggr uh, aggressively, attractively, so that investors can be part of our story and journey in the future. Harish, final question to you. Uh, uh, it's going to be a challenging thing uh, because Bhavish is uh, <coughs> saying that he's going to come back to, to you to raise funds uh, for the self gigafactory uh, as he scales up to 20 gigawatt hour. Uh, no, no, just uh, to clarify, I, didn't, I never said that. You're putting words in our <laughs> mouth. Uh, we, uh, Sajid, we never said there will be, uh, we will be coming back to the street to raise money. No, you said, uh, uh, so, you so said that, that uh, Giga, uh, Giga, uh, Giga factory like capex is not part of this, that's what you said. So, uh, and you will be looking at various other instruments, that's what you said. Uh, but I also said that uh, there will be different sources of uh, capital for the Giga factory capex in the future. It could be internal accruals, could be other sources. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I just want to make sure clear to your viewers that uh, we are not saying that we'll be coming back to the markets. Harish, uh, will there be enough uh, headroom do you have uh, to create that kind of internal resources so that you can take the growth forward in terms of cash flows? Absolutely. There is, uh, in terms of cash flows, we are well you know, structured. Our business designs are well structured. Our financial designs are well structured to deliver on the profitability path, to deliver on the cash flow path. Sajid. Bhavish and Harish, it, it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you very much for joining us. Your IPO is opening on August 2nd uh, and closes on 6th. 72 to 76 rupees is the uh, price band and the total IPO size is 6,145. Uh, that gives you a market value of over 33,500 crores at the upper end of the price band. Thank you for joining us on IPO Adda.